Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we'll be taking a look at conditional access, which provides an extra layer of security before allowing authenticated users to access data or other assets. So conditional access is implemented through conditional access policies, which are a set of rules that specify the conditions under which sign-ins are evaluated and allowed. For example, you can create a conditional access policy that states, if the user account name is a member of a group for users that are assigned the exchange, user, password, security, SharePoint, or global administrator roles require MFA before allowing access. This policy allows you to require MFA based on group membership rather than trying to configure individual user accounts for MFA when they're assigned or unassigned from these administrator roles. So a conditional access policy analyzes signals. Signal could be user and location, device, application, real-time risk, and we'll go more into detail with all the types of signals in the next slide. And the idea is you need to verify every access attempt through access control. You might have required MFA, block access and allow access. So here is a visual I got from the Microsoft documentation. The idea here is you have your signal and you have your user and location, application, real-time risk, and device. And here we have to verify every access attempt to meet the conditional access policies that were set to gain access to our apps and data. So let's take a closer look at signals. Signals is metadata associated with an identity attempting to gain access. And we'll be going over the full list of signals that are possible conditional access, starting with users or group membership. So policies target specific users and groups, including admin roles, giving admins fine-grained control over access. Then you could have signals that are named location or IP location information. So that's a range of IPs used when making policy decisions. So admins can opt to block or allow traffic from an entire country's IP ranges. For devices, users with devices of specific platforms or marked with a specific state can be used. For applications, users attempting to access specific applications can trigger different conditional access policies. Real-time sided risk detection. So signals integration with Azure ID identity protection allows conditional access policies to identify sign and behavior, and policies can then force users to perform password changes or multi-factor authentication to reduce the risk level or be blocked from access until administrator takes manual action. Then you have your cloud apps or cloud actions. So cloud apps or actions can include or exclude cloud applications or user actions that will be subject to policy. Then there's user risks. So from customers with access to identity protection, user risks can be evaluated as part of the conditional access policy. User risk represents the probability that a given identity or account is compromised. Let's talk about common decisions. So these define the access control that define what level of access based on the signal information. And so this is when we were talking about that verifying steps. These are those common decisions. So we have block access, which is the most restrictive decision. Then you have grant access. And this is the least restrictive decision, but still requires one or more of the following options. So there's require MFA, require device to be marked as compliant, require hybrid Azure AD join device, require approved client app, and require app protection policy. Another important thing to know is that you can use conditional access policies with Microsoft 365 Business Premium, Microsoft 365 E3 and E5, and Azure AD Premium P1 and Azure AD Premium P2 licenses. So that's the value of conditional access and how you can use conditional access policies to increase your level of security.